Hi, yes, I'm back at the whiteboard, but more importantly, I'm back at the whiteboard in the old lab. Beauty! Let's talk about Tesla Battery Day, which just happened, and of course everyone loses their mind every year about Battery Day and all the innovations announced and things like that, and there were tons of things announced in this. A lot of people said, oh, it wasn't that exciting, but there was actually lots of cool stuff in here, and we're going to talk about one aspect of it, but there were many other innovations in battery chemistry and manufacturing techniques, and you know, they reckon they're going to do a $25,000 EV, and like like a ton of stuff but the one that I wanted to talk about and the one people ask me most about is the new 4680 cell that they're going to actually produce themselves in their Tesla Gigafactories. So I'm going to try and break down why they actually went uh, and designed this new 4680 cell and how it compares to the previous 2170 and the 1865 or 18650 cell that they've used previously. Now Tesla of course started out famously choosing to use uh, cylindrical cells and the standard 18650 cell or 1865 as they're calling it now because Elon doesn't like the extra zero, it's just in there as a decimal point. Anyway, um, they started out using these and then with the model around about the Model 3-ish, something like that, they moved to the 2170 cell and now they're going to move to the 4680 cell which they've designed themselves. They actually got the pattern back in uh, late November, I'll link it in down below if you want to check it out, but there's not really a huge amount of detail in here. Might put up a couple of graphics from it, but anyway, they've designed this in-house and they're going to manufacture it themselves. Now, the big three claims that they had uh, for this new cell was it's going to have six times the power, and I've circled that one because that's the one that we're going to talk about today and why it's got six times the power over the previous 2170 that they used. It's got five times the energy, and it uh, has an extra 16% range in the battery. And quite a few people ask me this, why? If it's got five times the energy of the previous 2170, and you won't, why do they only get 16% extra range? Aha! It's all in the marketing linguistics. They say energy, not energy density. My density has brought me to you. What? I'm your density. So there's a bit of marketing wankology going on there by having, yeah, five times the energy. Everyone sees that, everyone reports it, everyone loses their collective minds and, well, it's only 16% extra range. So why does it have five times the energy but only 16% of the range? Well, it comes down to the size of the cells. The 18650 or the 1865 is actually 18 millimetres diameter by 65 millimetres long. That's where the numbers come from. Ignore the zero on the end. The 2170 they moved to is, you guessed it, 21 millimetres by 70 millimeters. So a bit wider, a bit longer, and 4680 is 46 millimeters by 80 millimeters. It's just a longer cell and thicker. Longer and thicker is better, obviously. So if you take those dimensions there and you pi r squared h that, you get about five and a half times the volume. Hence why five times the energy. It actually should be a bit more than that because they've announced like some new electro uh, chemistry and new material uh, science and stuff like that they've been working on which sounds really cool. So I would actually expect a bit more than five times the energy but aha uh -huh, there's a trick because it's six times the power. So there's actually a big trade-off when Tesla chose to use the uh, cylindrical cells like this, and they're still using cylindrical cells, uh, compared to what's called a large pouch uh, design, typically used on most other EVs. I'm not, I don't think any other EVs use cylindrical cells, do they? Not 100% sure. Please correct me down below. But anyway, most use uh, large pouch cell designs like this, which just have large flat elements in, and we'll talk about all the physical construction in a minute because it's important, but basically uh, you're trading off uh, power versus energy density. Cylindrical cells like this, you're going to get a larger energy density. Not a huge amount more, but it's larger, but you don't get the same amount of current output capability, i.e. power capability. So you're trading off energy density versus power between these. So the large pouch cells, you will get more power out of them, but slightly less energy density. So it's a trade-off, but 
Tesla now with this new uh, 4680 cell, they want the best of both worlds. They want the energy density, plus they've got a new uh, tab or tabless design, which allows them to get six times the power out. So with six times the power, does that mean it's like five or six times better than uh, the existing large power cells? Well, no, not really. You have to actually get the both which have the same energy density and do proper apples to apples comparisons before you'd know that. And really, there's not gonna be a huge amount of difference in it, but they have actually increased the power per capability, per i.e. current, think of the current capability per cell uh, compared to the 2170. And this all has to do with the tab design. So if you take one of these cylindrical cells here and you unroll it, this is called the jelly roll, then you end up with basically uh, three strips of material in here. Now the layer that I've drawn on the top here, this is the conductive cathode, that's the positive terminal, and that uh, actually is coated with the lithium whatever material, whatever the latest whiz-bang uh, material science technology they've got in these, different performance, different energy density requirements and different thermal properties and all sorts of stuff like that, choose all these different chemistries, choose your flavour. Anyway, it's a lithium coated uh, conductive uh, plate on there. And in, in the case of the 2170 cell, uh, somebody's taken one of these apart and actually looked at it, it's about 800 millimetres long. So, you know, it's fairly lengthy, it's like the length of my arm. And this sheet I've drawn on the bottom here, uh, this is the copper anode. It's usually made out of copper. It's usually quite thin, like, you know, you won't get much smaller than 10 microns. It can vary, but that'd be the uh, sort of like minimum thickness that you get in there. Once again, it's a trade-off of uh, energy density versus power. The thicker you make all of these layers in here, then the less surface area you can get, therefore the less energy density. But the thinner you make them, especially like the conductive uh, layers, the thinner they get, just like on your PCB. You get one half ounce copper, one ounce copper, two ounce, a four ounce copper, something like that. It has a lower resistance and we're gonna get into that. And that all has to do with uh, the ultimate power output or maximum current output capability. So we don't actually know specific details of the 4680, whether or not it actually uses thicker uh, conductive and copper materials in here, but the six times power output actually comes from a different tab construction. I'll talk about that in a second. But we've got the final layer in the middle, which I've drawn in green here, and that's the separator. That actually is a uh, porous material, and it's usually some sort of poly put the kettle on uh, material like that. And it has to be porous uh, to uh, for the chemistry to actually happen. And and uh, the neat thing about uh, some of these poly materials used in these, even though they're porous, effectively you can think of them like they've got little holes in them, uh, then when they actually, when these batteries overheat, then this uh, poly put the kettle on material can actually melt and it can actually seal those holes and that actually stops current flow and they can sort of like self-extinguish. It's like a overheating protection mechanism. It's kind of cool. Don't know if the 4680, you know, has that or the existing 2170, not entirely sure. But anyway, that's just a cool feature of the separator. And for those playing along at home, the porous percentage, i.e how porous it is, you know, it's around about 40 to 60%, sort of, you know, somewhere in that range. Now, I said that the uh, copper anode down the bottom, the negative terminal, that's always, pretty much always copper, and I believe it is the case in the uh, Tesla shells. In fact, that's what they show in the really sexy pornographic photo that they've uh, shown for this thing. It's just, look at all that copper. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful. But I specifically said that the cathode up the top here is not going to be copper. And I won't go into the reasons why it's to do with the electrochemistry of it. And well, so those battery cell chemistry experts can you know, debate that down uh, below. But it's usually like uh, aluminium, something like that, uh, which is coated with the lithium uh, type material. And now this is where the magic in the new 4680 battery comes from. It's called a tabless design, and this is what they have the patent on. And uh, you can see that basically all existing cylindrical cells, they actually use these welded tabs. They've got a tab on the top layer and a tab on the bottom layer. And you see these little dots in here. These are like the little however they want to weld those on. So they've actually got to weld 
those onto the top and bottom. And then the tab, actually, then that's got to be welded to the bottom uh, battery to the negative battery terminal. This one has to be then welded up to the uh, positive battery terminal. And, well, you've got all these little connection steps in there. So Tesla, of course, one of their big announcements is they want to be the world's best manufacturer just the world's best manufacturing company. So they're optimizing their steps and they've got some you know, really cool technology and this tabless design is not only, not only to give increased power, but it's also to reduce production manufacturing steps as well. Because if you've got to produce your jelly roll like this, you know, you've got to coat your, your aluminum cathode up here and then you've got to put your, you know, manufacture your separator and then you've got to roll it with your uh, copper anode and stuff like that. And then you're gonna stop or move to another part of your production line and they weld on these tabs and uh, it's just like horrible wastage production steps. So what they've come up with is a tabless design to do away with these tabs that not only improves manufacturing speed and streamlines the whole process and things like that, allows for uh, more automation, you're less machines, you can uh, install more machines per square meter of uh, factory space and all that sort of great stuff which they're working on, which was one of the huge announcements by the way, was that, I can't remember the exact number, like order of magnitude saving in battery manufacturing floor space or something ridiculous like that. It was really quite amazing. So as I said, when all these layers are all rolled up uh, together, this is called the jelly roll. Well, I got the dunny roll uh, to give a demo. So let's have a look. Just, so, just imagine that this is your cylindrical cell. I've got little uh, post-it notes on here for the tabs. So if we unroll this sucker, here we go. You know, uh, roughly 800 meters, good enough for Australia, right? You've got the tab over here and you've got a tab down here as well. This will make an interesting thumbnail, won't it? Um, imagine that you've got your copper conductive surface like this, your electrons, you know, they're being produced, you know, everywhere all the way along here, and they have to travel the whole length, like this. They have to travel the whole 800 millimeters to get out. That's a long way. Please excuse the crudity of the model, didn't have time to build it, scale or to paint it. I think I'm going to come a gutsy here. I put some post-it notes, but what if you had lots of tabs, like covering the whole thing of this, when you roll it up like this, then I should have made, should have ripped off more of the dunny roll, but what if you did that and then you folded all of the tabs in like that. Ugh. Is that looking something like the Tesla photo? Uh, not really, but hopefully you get the idea. That's what they're doing. This is called a tabless design, but Dave, you just said there's like all these multiple tabs. What if on your copper anode like this, you did away with the tab like this, like that, and you put all these little cuts along here like this so that then you could like fold them up and over like that every single one of these then the entire length when you roll it together and it rolls inside like this okay and then your tabs all like fold over into the middle like this and this is exactly what we're seeing on the tesla Wow, design. Yeah, <laughs> I really didn't have time to build this to scale or to paint it, did I? But does that look something like what Tesla have shown? Yep, that's exactly what they're doing. With the bottom anode here, they're actually cutting it in the one sheet of copper, doing away with all of the tab worlds, and this has some really cool advantages, and this is how they're getting the six times power output. So why are we getting six times the power output? Well, in this particular case, let's just extend that out. Let's imagine that's our battery like that. All of these tabs are all folded over on top of each other. So you're effectively shorting out this whole bottom. So instead of your electrons having to go the full 800 millimeters, they only have to go the maximum of the 80 millimeters, which is the height of the cell. So at most, the electrons just have to travel the 80 millimeters instead of the 800. You've just lowered your resistance, everything else being the same, lowered your resistance by an order of magnitude. And when you lower the equivalent resistance of your cell, you can get more power out of it because there's less power loss, there's less I squared R losses.
So if we plug some typical numbers into a calculator here for, as I said, a 10 micron uh, copper sheet, I don't know the exact value for uh, the Tesla one, but let's just put 10 microns on there. You wouldn't go any thinner than that, especially for a high power application like uh, EV batteries. Then if you whack that into the calculator, the number that pops out for the 2170 up here in the 18650, they're roughly equivalent, uh, you know, in the order of 20 milliohms cell resistance, like maximum, uh, when if the electrons have to travel that whole 800 millimeter length. But you plug the same numbers into the 4680 up here, bingo, because it's an order of magnitude shorter distance like this for the same thickness of copper, and hence, like the same, assuming that the chemistry is the same, everything's the same, so the energy density of the battery is the same. Remember that word, density. The electrons now only have to travel the 80 millimeters like this instead of 800. So therefore, it's an order of magnitude less resistance. It's going to be in the order of like two milliohms, a couple of milliohms. And that is equivalent to the, here's some actual uh, data for uh, research data. Um, that's equivalent to the large pouch. Uh, designs which are used in other EV car batteries, the big flat designs. And the reason the large pouch designs have very low resistance in the order of a couple of milliohms is because they're physically large, big, flat sheets like this, and the tabs come directly out. Um, there's, you know, like, there's none of this roll rubbish in here that you got in the uh, 2170s and the 1865s. And then if you really want to, the pouch designs, you can actually put more of them in here like this, and then you can just fold the tabs over, similar to what we do here, and then you can, or you can just, you know, like bus bar them like that up the top or whatever, and uh, you can get very low uh, equivalent series resistance for the cell. And that's what Tesla are trying to do here, because they've realized that their choice of uh, the cylindrical cell limits them in power. And of course, Tesla are uh, like massively powerful cars, right? One of the most powerful on the market. So why do they need to make six times more power up here? Well, they've got the truck things coming, but also to do with the thermals and the losses. So if you look at their existing cells, which we're getting in the order of tens of milliohms uh, series resistance, um, it, let's say it's drawing uh, 10 amps here, that is an internal power loss of 2 watts, right? 20 milliohms times 10 amps, that's 2 watt loss. And for a typical, you know, lithium ion cell, that might be the equivalent of, say, you know, 5% loss in the cell. So you have that internal heating in the cell and that can affect uh, the performance of the cell, but the, so you've got to get all that heat out. And really, um, you know, that is quite a lot. So the existing pouch cell designs, large pouches, are much better in that respect than the uh, cylindrical cells which Tesla chose to use. Why they chose to use that originally, I don't know, it was cool and they're off the shelf, they wanted to sort of use like off the shelf 18650s and it's worked for them but their thermal management of the packs has been quite different because now we have to talk about the thermals a bit. So when it comes to heating up and thermals of a cylindrical cell, it's what's called anisotropic, uh, which means that the heat is basically in the axial direction like this. If you look at a uh, heat map, of, I'll, I'll put up a heat map of here of a typical uh, prismatic cell and how they heat up inside. You'll notice that it's in the axial direction like this. And really the best way to extract heat from a cylindrical cell like this is from the top and the bottom. It's going to have a higher thermal resistance if you try and get the heat out of the sides of the cell like this. It's just got higher thermal resistance. So this is what Tesla have done in the past to cool down their battery packs. They've relied on uh, like uh, actually, you know, heat conductive uh, materials and things um, surrounding the, you know, the sides of the cell like this. And it's not a very efficient way to cool down prismatic cells. They want to uh, basically get their heat out in an axial direction like that. But the problem with the existing cell designs is that, well, look, you've got this bottleneck, you've got this tiny little pissant tab down here, little thin little tab coming out here and here. That's a choke point, that's massively high thermal resistance, trying to get that, sure, you might have this big slab of copper in here, right? 800 millimeters by 70 millimeters or whatever it is, right? And like a huge amount of copper in there, but then your bottleneck trying to get it out the bottom or even get it out the top, uh, coppers, uh, it's going to be better to get it out the bottom via the copper uh, terminal, by the way. It has to go through that little tab 
uh -uh, not a very good design. But with the new 4680, they've solved that because they've folded all of the copper over to have one big, huge chunk of copper coming out the bottom of the th th this thing. So that's how Tesla's gonna cool these new batteries. They're gonna get them all out the bottom like this. It's gonna have a massively low thermal resistance because it's in direct contact. Well, it, it is direct contact. They've actually, their bottom plate, if you have a look at the uh, patent here, it actually shows that the um, anode uh, plate down here has like these little spikes on it that I don't know if they'll actually use that in production. Um, but, you know, it's basically going to have contacts which, which then uh, contact with this huge, basically one big copper sheet like that. And basically you're getting all of the heat out very efficiently via the negative terminal of the battery. So that's how they're going to cool down these designs. It's going to be a vast improvement in uh, thermal efficiency compared to uh, the existing uh, prismatic cell, the 2170s and the 18650s. So if we go back to our copper resistance calculator and we plug in the numbers for the uh, 4860, you will find for the same uh, 10 micron, in fact, it's nine micron because that's what my calculator's got, but you know, good enough for Australia, nine micron copper uh, thickness. So we're comparing apples to apples between the 2170 and the 4680 here. It's an order of magnitude lower resistance, as we said before. And uh, so our power loss, our internal power loss at the same 10 amp, nominal 10 amps, then we're talking 0.2 watts instead of 2 watts. So not only have we drastically decreased our thermal resistance to extract the heat out of the battery, the correct method how it should be for a uh, cylindrical cell, but we've also lowered the uh, internal resistance of the cell by an order of magnitude as well. Double whammy, it's great. So this is how they're gonna get the six times power output of this thing. As I said, the energy uh, in there is just due to it being a larger cell. They're gonna get 16% uh, plus range. So I'm not hugely impressed with the extra 16% uh, here. I, I think they'll get uh, better, like longer battery lives. You know, they didn't, I don't think, they didn't announce their million mile battery, did they? Everyone was kind of expecting that, I think. But yeah, you potentially get uh, with the better thermal management of these cells and simpler as well because you can just have one gigantic bottom plate on the bottom of the battery. You don't have to run all the crap in between all the cells and get it out inefficiently that way. Just one big huge heat sink on the bottom that, you know, you've only got the contacts. Um, basically you're getting the heat directly transferred via the copper to this huge base pad here. You will have, of course, some thermal contact resistance uh, between the internal copper sheet in here of your jelly roll and your uh, negative um, anode terminal down there. So those little spikes are whatever they're going to use. So there's some little contact resistance there, but it's still vastly improved over the existing uh, 2170 design. And then you'll have that negative anode uh, terminal basically just, you know, pushed straight against the heat sink on the bottom. And they'll use that as the conductive uh, thing as well for the uh, cells. So, and then you'll, well, you've got to like, insulate it and stuff like that. So they might have some like, you know, conductive thermal insulation and stuff like that. But anyway, it's gonna be vastly improved over the existing 2170 design. So almost certainly they're gonna get better range, better life, um, all sorts of things out of their battery. And simpler thermal management. It's a win all round. And you might be asking, well, it seems really obvious. Why didn't anyone just cut these, uh, you know, instead of welding these tabs onto here, why didn't they actually um, just cut the copper before and then fold it over. It seems like you know, really obvious thing to do. I don't know. Comments down below. So there you go. I've waffled on enough about the 4680 cell, but hopefully uh, you learned something there about cell construction and thermal management and stuff like that and uh, battery construction. But the good news is that the new 4680 cell is basically in that has the same internal resistance as the uh, large pouch designs used by other manufacturers. So in theory, like the power should be like very similar. How it works on like energy density and stuff like that and versus weight and all the other stuff you can put into metrics for the uh, for electric vehicles and uh, performance and stuff like that. But anyway, yeah, they're now on par with the large uh, pouch designs and that's really cool. And in terms of thermals, probably equivalent as well. Although, you know, once again, you've got to do a proper apples to apples comparison. It might be quite hard uh, to compare them thermally and things like that. But anyway, 
fast improvement. And just going to a bigger cell like this, as they did for the 1865 to the 2170, just moving to a much bigger, fatter cell like this, you get just inherent advantages just by doing that. Regardless of any other uh, technology changes at all, you get uh, increased packing density, uh, of course, because you've got like a larger cell, so you'll have like a, the energy density per cell is going to be larger, as they said, like five times or five and a half times the uh, energy just by going from this size cell to this size cell. You can pack them all together and then you've got uh, the steel casing as well because you've got to have the steel casing on the cell. So potentially lower weight there because there's less steel um, in individual. You've got fewer cells. So for the same given kilowatt hour size pack, uh, you've got like just a lot less metal in there. Just so it's got to weigh less, that's going to be an inherent advantages. You've got manufacturing fewer cells on your production line, so there's got to be inherent advantages there. Just, uh, just sheer like manufacturing handling and stuff like that alone would have advantages. So lots of advantages in these cells just by moving from that to that. So actually ignoring all the other, uh, you know, the tabless design news and the other material science technologies and different uh, stuff they're working on, it's actually rather, uh, these numbers are actually rather disappointing because as I said, I expected a 5.5 times, just do the calculations going from this size to this size, it's 5.5 times the energy anyway, like whoop de doo um, it, You get that by going to a larger cell. Um, and 16% plus range, I haven't run the numbers, but here's an exercise for those playing along at home. Uh, just, you know, calculate the extra, like, uh, volume efficiency, volumetric efficiency you'd get when you, like, stack all the cells uh, together in a uh, flat pack. How much extra range you'd get just by actually increased efficiency of the packing density of a larger cell versus a smaller cell and you'd pro I'd be surprised if it's not near 16% anyway. So really, like, the only exciting announcement here is the time 6 power due to the tabless uh, design. But apart from this, um, it's, it's rather disappointing, actually, because you get that anyway by going to a larger cell. Uh -huh. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you learned something useful. And if you did, please give it a big thumbs up. As always, comment down below and check out the EEV blog forum where no doubt everyone's going to discuss this. Catch you next time.